Griffin Update is our student-produced digital magazine show bringing you news, sports, and information from Missouri Western State University and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Missouri Western and the Northwest region of Missouri a great place to call home. Hello, and welcome to Griffin Update. I'm Mackenzie Bose. And I'm Morgan Doyle. On today's show, we'll be hearing from students about the upcoming advising for the next semester. We'll also feature a Missouri Western employee who is not only a professor, but also helps by giving students a listening ear. And last but not least, Bailey Ketchum will join us with her sports report. It's that time of year again, Morgan. Have you decided to meet with your advisor yet to figure out your schedule for the next semester? No, I'm only a freshman, so I don't get to figure out my schedule until a little later. I just signed up for my classes and my schedule looks pretty easy, but I did run into a few problems. Like what? Well, some of my classes aren't until next spring, and so I can't enroll for them now, so I'll have to wait. I hope my schedule will be easy to figure out. I have to meet with my advisor before too long. Good luck. Reporter Bo Baker caught up with some students to talk about advising here at Missouri Western. It is that time of the year again. It's time to meet with your advisors to set up your classes for next semester. Now this time of the year may be a little bit difficult for the students. The advising process is pretty stressful, especially if you end up doing it real late because you're scrambling around trying to get classes that might already be filled up. I think that varies from person to person. If you do it early, I think the less stressful it is, but if you wait till the last minute, I think it can be very difficult. These two men also discuss why it's good to have advising meetings early in the semester. It's good to do them early in the semester because it gives you time to really see what you want to do, even if you want to continue on with your major or if you need any time to change any classes that you might not want to take or you might have something else that would be better suiting for your schedule. I think it's important to do the advising meetings early in the semester so you can so you make sure the class is available and you can get the right class and the right teacher. If it wasn't for our advisors, the advising process probably wouldn't be as smooth as it typically is for students here at Missouri Western. As far as just picking classes on your own, you can end up double up in a course that you didn't need. You can end up taking classes that aren't even affiliated with your major, so it's good to have somebody who can assist you and kind of guide you along the basis of your journey throughout college. Uh, you can get to know your advisor. They also tell you very helpful things as far as classes go and who to, like, picking the right teachers and stuff. French, that'd be cool. That'd yeah. be cool. Don't do it now. Wait till probably spring yeah. to do that. Make sure you meet with your advisors if you haven't already to be ready to schedule your classes for fall 2018. For Griffin Update, this has been Bo Baker. I have to say, if I did my schedule by myself, I'd probably be lost and sign up for classes I didn't need. You'd probably sign up for underwater basket weaving for your sake. <laughs> However, I already have 120 credit hours since I'm a transfer, so I'm thinking right about now I almost have it figured out. That's a lot of hours. I hope I don't have to take that many hours before I graduate. It was a lot of hours and it did take a toll on my mental state, but it was worth it. I could see that happening. Have you talked to anyone? Maybe a professor? I haven't. This time of year is just a bummer. Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD, is another form of depression. Your winter blues might not be just that. Reporter Lance Lawton caught up with instructor John Mandrakia to talk about this disorder and how we can get help if needed. Some people look forward to the winter season. There's snow, staying inside with others, and it's the holiday season. However, some find it much more difficult to handle, as they might be diagnosed with seasonal affective disorder. Seasonal affective disorder, known as SAD or seasonal depression, is something many do not know about, but is a real and serious thing. Dr. John Mandrakia, a psychology professor at Missouri Western, gives more info on SAD. So seasonal affective disorder, um, from a psychological standpoint, it's actually a specific type of major depressive disorder. So a lot of the symptoms are really not very different than what you think of typical depression. Um, really what differentiates it is that it's a pattern of the onset, so when it occurs. So with typical depression, it doesn't seem to be linked to any kind of season, but with seasonal affective disorder or major depression with seasonal pattern, generally it comes on the same time during the year and goes away the same time during the year. Although Mandrakia isn't an expert on seasonal depression, he has some good tips for helping with SAD. So one of the things that you would encourage people who are maybe at higher risk for seasonal affective disorder, who have experienced it in the past, is just get up and get moving. Try to exercise regularly. Um, even just getting out of bed, you feel so good when you're cold to just lay in bed for half the day, but just get up and get moving. Along with Mandrakia, Dave Brown, 
director of counseling at Missouri Western's Counseling Center, knows a thing or two about SAD. So I'm assuming that it's probably most prominent in those parts of the country where you see less sun or you have more cloudy days. I know a lot of folks go south, and I know they go south for a reason, so there may be something to, to that also. Overall, both Mandrakia and Brown have the same outlook on where you need to go for help. I would direct them to the counseling center. Uh, the first place to deal with that kind of thing is to recognize that it is real and recognize that it is a problem. And once you've gone so far as to recognizing it as being a real issue, then you can start developing a plan to, to correct it. Along with the amount of knowledge Mandrakia knows just on seasonal depression, he also knows plenty more about the world of psychology. So within psychology, my degree is in counseling psychology, but really my kind of area of specialization is forensic psychology. So forensic psychology is really about like where psychology and the law meet, and so the specific stuff that I do is within the criminal justice system. Um, so I'll evaluate people who are maybe not competent to stand trial, or potentially people who want to plead not guilty by reason of insanity. Originally, Mandrakia was teaching in Mississippi before he saw an opening at Missouri Western. After having kids and much thought, he wanted to be closer to his home of Kansas City. I came in and interviewed, and I thought, well, I'm only going to take the job if it seems like a really good fit for me. And so I came here thinking, well, what's the chances this can be a good fit, that they're going to want me, that I'm going to want to leave this great job there for a job here. And I really like the fit of it. I like the university. I like the faculty member. It feels like a, a warm, friendly place. Jordan Booth, a senior psych student of Mandrakia's, is grateful that he can work with Mandrakia on projects. But it's really fun working with him. He does a really good job of just getting you really oriented towards your goals and not in like a way where you're scared if you don't make it or times where if you need help. It's just the, the really good interaction. Overall, Mandrakia is proud to be a Griffin and enjoys being on campus. Really promote achievement and people are always thinking not just what are we doing well but what else can we do for students what can we do for faculty what can we do for staff reporting for griffin update i'm lance lawton i hope that anyone who is affected by sad can find the help they need dr mandrakia sounds like an outstanding professor and an awesome guy maybe i can swing by and talk to him a little bit later but let's stop talking about that for right now i'm kind of getting sad maybe you can talk to me for a little bit during this break a leading problem I faced is a misunderstanding on the part of students of the importance of academic advising. They miss appointments. They don't make appointments. But what's most disappointing is when they come unprepared. Give me a student with a plan in their head, or better yet, on paper. We could talk about their interests, not just about their classes. We could discuss internships, classwork, grad programs. It would open the door to what advising is truly about. Can I help you? but instead they come to me in a panic when they need to register I because- I need to talk to you. I was trying to register for my classes, but it wouldn't let me do it because I need my pen and I haven't had time to set up an advising, so I don't even know what classes I need to take. So I just signed up for a bunch of random ones and I'm gonna drop them later. So can I have my pen real fast? Because I'm still locked into a computer in the lab. Am I interrupting? Take ownership of your education. Make the most of your advisement by being proactive, punctual, and prepared. You'll open the door to more personalized attention and avoid costly setbacks. It's never too soon to begin planning your next steps at Missouri Western. Let's tell everyone what's happening on campus. One of the new features on Griffin Update is a calendar of on-campus events over the next two weeks. Check out what's happening and stay tuned for the Griffin Newscast and Bailey Sports Report after this message. At Missouri Western, it's on us. It's on us, all of us, to take responsibility and stop sexual assault. To create a campus environment where everyone is safe and feels safe. To realize that ending sexual assault is not an individual endeavor. But a collective effort. To understand that it affects not only students, but faculty and staff members alike. At Missouri Western, we take action. It's on us to look out for each other and not look the other way. We step up and say something. We support survivors. We are going to be a part of the solution and not the problem. It's on us 
to intervene and take responsibility. So take action because we can and will make a difference. At Missouri Western, it's on us to, to put, put an, an end to sexual assault. assault. Begin by taking the pledge at itsonus.org. Ahead on the Griffin Newscast, the sights and sounds of Heart Your Union. We take you to the event that showcased the student organizations of Missouri Western. Also ahead, reaction to recent gun violence. How prepared is Missouri Western for an active shooter situation? All that and more is coming up. The Griffin Newscast starts now. The Griffin Newscast, your news in five minutes from the Griffin News, the definition of convergence. This is the Griffin Newscast with Mary Beth Rosenauer. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mary Beth Rosenauer. On February 14th, the second floor of Blum Union was filled with representatives of the student organizations on campus. Griffin News' Elijah Smith was at the annual Heart Your Union event and has more. Heart Your Union took over the second floor of Blum Union on Valentine's Day again this year. Students were able to check out several of the student organizations and offices on campus. Students can know more about what we're doing, so it gives us an opportunity to advertise that. Representatives of the organizations said they enjoyed getting to meet students. My favorite part of our union is just talking to students, and especially when it comes to my office, um, learning what students are passionate about and how we can help them volunteer in that area. We signed up for the table because we thought it would be a really good way to kind of get back to campus. I love getting to know students that I haven't met yet, and just like passing by, just kind of seeing like a little cross section of these real those who stopped by Heart Your Union were able to enter giveaways, decorate cookies, and even get their caricature drawn. And, of course, get a ton of Valentine's Day candy. I really like the decorating. There's a lot of stuff in that one, too, like Jenga and there's a photography booth, but it's pretty great. Esri Student Health Center also participated and gave students free screenings throughout the event. Reporting from Blum Union, this is Elijah Smith for the Griffin News. Dangerously icy conditions forced Missouri Western to cancel classes and close campus three days last week. Some students complained that they never received an email from the university about the closures. Despite the threat of more wintry weather, campus did reopen on Friday. The warm weather we've seen this week is certainly a welcome change. Now to an update on SGA's government shutdown. The full shutdown seems to be over, as SGA held their regularly scheduled meeting on February 19th. SGA attended to routine business in the meeting, which was their first in three weeks. While they say their protest is still ongoing, SGA decided to hold the meeting because they were concerned the protest was hurting students. SGA and administrators are hopeful that they will be able to come to a resolution soon. Mass shootings and gun violence are once again making national headlines. Recent school shootings have some students wondering how prepared Missouri Western is in the event of an active shooter situation. The university hasn't held an active shooter drill for at least a couple years. Risk manager Tim Kissick says Missouri Western is safe. He urges students who feel as though the university is unprepared to talk to him. We spoke with a Missouri Western alumnus who now works in the news media to hear her thoughts on the recent events. Shootings on college campuses are happening more and more frequently, and so I feel like it's important for anyone, whether you're at a university, whether you're at a business, whether you're in elementary school, to know what the protocol is for an active shooter and what to do, because the more education that's out there, the less likely you are to have people losing their lives. We will bring you a more in-depth report on Missouri Western's readiness for an active shooter situation later this semester. An alleged sexual assault was reported to campus police on January 19th. The assault was reported to have happened on campus. The case is currently being handled by the Buchanan County Prosecutor's Office, so little information is available. This is the second sex crime to be reported this calendar year. You can pick up a copy of the Griffin News on one of many newsstands across campus, or log on to thegriffinnews.com to see the latest updates on the stories making headlines at Missouri Western. I'm Mary Beth Rosenauer, and that's your news in five minutes. Thanks for watching the Griffin Newscast. One out of every four car accidents are caused by texting and driving. Wait, what did you just say? You heard me. 
Nomads better keep your eyes on the road. Welcome to the Griffin Update Sports Report, your place to catch up on all Griffin sports. I'm your host, Bailey Ketchum. First up, men's and women's basketball had their final home games and senior night on February 17th against Pittsburgh State. Check out how it went. Senior night for the Missouri Western women's basketball team took place Saturday, February 11th. The Griffins took on the Pitt State Gorillas as the season begins to come to an end. Seniors Savannah Lenz, Paige Phipps, and Sarah Ledbetter were on display for their incredible work they have put into this program. Lenz gave her take on what Missouri Western has meant to her and life after basketball. Um, the best part about playing for Missouri Western is playing for Coach Ed and Coach Smith because they push you not only in the basketball court but off the court, um, like by education, even in just real life. So. That's the best part about playing Missouri Western because they just push you to your limits and push you outside of your box to make you the better person. So. After graduation, I had to attend uh, grad school for athletic training. Um, I found the joy of that um, through my own injuries and then just with the relationships I built with our own athletic trainers. Unfortunately, the Griffins came up short, falling to the Gorillas after a hard-fought battle, 52-61. The Lady Griffins will have two more opportunities to get one more victory for their seniors. For Griffin Update, I'm Gannon Corley II. Last Saturday, the Missouri Western men faced Pittsburgh State. Not only was it their last home game of the regular season, but it was also senior night for six Griffins. This group has done a lot for Missouri Western basketball the past four years. The seniors consist of Joe Hamilton, Mason Hughes, Wes Mitter, Cole Clearman, TJ Evans, and Seth Boniface. After celebrating the seniors, the Griffin men got into it with the Gorillas in their second meeting of the season. The Griffins kept the game close with two 11-3 runs midway in the game to trail Pitt by a few points, but could never gain the lead. The Griffins forced the Gorillas into 16 turnovers and scored 22 points off of the turnovers, but unfortunately Pitt State was 61.5% with their threes and continued to hold the lead the entire game. Junior LaVon Hightower had a career high of 27 points with 8 rebounds to keep the men in the game, but it wasn't enough as the men ended their senior night in a 93-80 loss. This is Bailey Ketchum for Griffin Update Sports. The men and women unfortunately did not get the results they wanted. In other sports news, baseball had their home opening weekend February 17th against number 21 St. Cloud State. Reporter Dawson Whitman has more on the games. The Missouri Western baseball team hosted St. Cloud State on a very windy Sunday afternoon. This was the third game of the series as the Griffs looked to avoid the sweep. We pick up in the bottom of the second as Griffins have runners on the corners for Michael Miller who executes a beautiful suicide squeeze play by beating the throw to first to bring in Will Jeebus and give Mo West the early 1-0 lead. Now with a 4-0 lead in the bottom of the third, Brooks Day gets an RBI as he singles to right to bring home Levi Schreiner as Will Jeebus advances to third and the Griffins take a 5-0 lead. Meanwhile, on the mound for Missouri Western was junior right-hander Jacob Miller who had a game-high five strikeouts and only gave up two earned in four innings. However, the Huskies would try to make a game of it in the sixth with Mo West leading 7-4. St. Cloud State would push another run across thanks to this wild pitch thrown by Trevor Carroll. However, with bases loaded and two outs, Carroll would get out of trouble with a big ground out to shortstop Dusty Stroop, who would take it himself to preserve a 7-5 lead after six. The score wouldn't stay that way for long because in the bottom of the seventh with Will Jeebus on second, Griffin's third baseman Casey Danley would hit one deep down the left field line for a two-run bomb. This would put the finishing touches on the Huskies as the Griffins would go on to avoid the sweep with a 9-5 victory. Missouri Western is now at 500 on the year with a 5-5 record overall as they head into MIA conference play. With Missouri Western and Griffin Update Sports, I'm Dawson Whitman. Baseball dropped the first two games, but picked up a win in the last game to avoid the sweep. For some more updates about how the weekend went for the rest of the Griffins, 
Softball went 0-5 on the weekend in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Baseball played Central Missouri last weekend, but unfortunately did not avoid the sweep. Men's and women's track and field competed in the MIAA Conference Championships in Pittsburgh, Kansas. The women finished in a tie for 11th, and the men finished 12th. They also had nine top eight finishes. Women's tennis played Missouri Valley College and picked up an 8-1 victory. Men's and women's basketball played Lindenwood on Saturday, but neither of the teams got the results they wanted. Women's basketball also played Monday in the first round of the conference tournament in an upset win over Kearney. For the upcoming schedule, women's basketball plays Thursday in the conference quarterfinals against UCO. Baseball heads to Evansville, Indiana to face Southern Indiana this weekend, and softball heads to Lindenwood on March 9th. That's all we have for you today in sports. For more information on Griffin Athletics, check out GoGriffins.com. Thanks, Bailey. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on MWSU TV Channel 12. You can also catch us on the Griffin Update Vimeo and YouTube channels and the Missouri Western Student Media homepage. And make sure you check out the next edition of the Griffin News. From all of us here at Griffin Update, thank you for watching.